Hello again, STAT students. We've already learned about correlation coefficients and how to find the equation of a regression line. Today we're going to learn about variation about that regression line. We've already learned how to calculate R, the coefficient of determination, which is the, uh, a measure of the variation about a regression line, is actually R squared. So with that in mind, let's get started with this lesson. So variation about a regression line, we're going to start with all of our data points. And here's the point X bar, Y bar. Now we're going to measure everything from Y bar. So we're going to take each of these deviations, that's why they're um, written as Ds, from the, each of our data points to Y bar. And if you take each of those deviations, that's the y coordinate minus y bar, and you square those, and you add them all up for every data point, that gives you a measure of the total variation about the regression line. It turns out that that total variation, and you can write this down, but you don't need to memorize this yet. Um, total variation is really um, a measure of two things. It's your explained variation and your unexplained variation. And R squared gives us a measure of the ratio of those. It's a percentage or a fraction of explained divided by total. So what fraction of the total is explained variation? So let me uh, show you a figure from the textbook we're currently using. <coughs> and I can't see why that's cut off. There we go. And again, um, if we're looking at just one X value, Here's your, um, here's your point X bar, Y bar, but all we're really interested in is Y bar. And your total variation is the distance from your data point to Y bar. Um, we just showed that in the last picture. It's, um, it can be split into explained and unexplained. Your explained deviation is from Y bar to Y hat, because Y hat is what we're predicting. And then the deviation from y hat to your data point is unexplained. Again, no reason to memorize this at our level. Just want you to see that we can split that deviation into um, explained and unexplained parts. So the question is, why are we measuring our deviation here from y bar? Y bar or why is y bar um, related to our explained deviation? And the answer is because absent any information about the regression line, our best predictor for a data set for y would be y bar, the average. If we don't know anything about the regression line, the best we can say is, well, for x, maybe y will be average. So that's why we're um, measuring everything from Y bar. Get my uh, papers in order here. So now, let's go to our phrasing handout. <coughs> From our phrasing handout, now, again, this is from Lee Kuchera, the goddess of AP stats. If we're trying to um, explain something about uh, R squared, again, underlined uh, words or phrases indicate where context is needed. So we would explain in here what is the response variable X, I'm sorry, Y, and what is the explanatory variable X. But R squared, 
If you think of it as the explained divided by the unexplained, R squared is the percent of the variation of the response variable that can be explained by the approximate linear relationship with the explanatory variable. What we mean by that is we say it's explained by it. That's where our um, <coughs> explained divided by total comes from. So it's the percent of the variation in the response variable that can be explained by that linear relationship, by that regression line. So here's a sample. Here are four data points. And I have put them into my TI-30 and I have come up with <coughs> this slope and y-intercept. So this is my regression equation, my red line here. It's very important just from a notation standpoint to remember, since this is a regression line and we're predicting y values based on x, whenever you write the equation of a regression line, you use y hat. So this red line, this regression line that best fits these four data points is y hat equals this equation. So let's uh, see from my TI-30 here what that's telling us and then we'll confirm that r is approximately 0.3. We'll zoom in. I've taken the liberty for the shortness of this video of already having put these data points into the calculator. And there's our four data points. Instead of scrolling to the right, well, actually before we do that, let's scroll to the right. If you needed, um, if you were calculating R on your own and you needed sigma X and sigma X squared and all those numbers, you keep scrolling. Here's the sum of the four X values. Here's the sum of the X squareds. Here's the sum of the four y values. Here's the sum of the four y squareds. Then you could put those into that equation at the bottom of your correlation coefficient handout. Anyway, oh, and there's the sum of the x, y's as well. Now, many times, especially in statistics, <coughs> the, um, in statistics, to write the equation of a regression line, we often write y equals a plus bx which means B is the slope. Well, Texas Instruments is not a statistics company. It's a calculator slash math company. So they use it as AX plus B, just like we are used to MX plus B. So A is the slope, B is the Y-intercept, and the correlation coefficient is approximately 0.30. Now, if I want to find out what R squared is, I just take that 0 0.30 and square it. And I get approximately 0 0.09. <clears throat> that means that there's so much variation in these data points that only 9% of a change in y can be explained by a change in x. So in other words, as I go from here to here on the regression line, here's the change in y, here's the change in x. So because there's a regression line, given a change in x, I would expect a certain change in y unless the slope is zero. Only 9% of this change in y can be explained by this regression line or by a change in X, however you like to word it. The other 91% is unexplained. Now, some of you might be wondering, because it's been a while since you've done algebra, how did I get 4 elevenths and 20 elevenths as my slope and Y intercept? Well, I'm not gonna go through a lengthy explanation of that. I'm just gonna show this to you here. <coughs> Please feel free to stop the video, follow along. Perhaps you remember doing problems like this back in an algebra course.
So we've, we haven't really discussed what might be some of these unexplained causes of variation. Well, it could just be random variation, which is um, a sampling error. And again, error doesn't mean mistake. It just means variation. So this time I got these data points when I sampled. Next time I'd get a different set of data points when I sampled. Could just be coincidence, could be lurking variables. And um, we don't know what's causing it. That's why it's unexplained. The big lesson I want you to get out of today is the answer to this question. When you see a problem that says, what fraction or what percent or what proportion of a change in this variable can be explained by a change in that variable? The answer is always R squared for our purposes. That's really what you need to get out of today. So if we go back to the example I did previously, can't believe it was that many slides ago. Here it is. <clears throat> So if I were to ask, uh, what percent um, of a change in Y can be explained um, by a change in X? Or what percent of a change in, or what proportion of a change in Y can be explained by the linear relationship of this data set? Or what fraction of a change in Y can be explained by this regression line? Those are all just different ways of asking the same thing. The answer is R squared, approximately 9.1. And just for giggles, in case you ever come upon a, a professor who's really big on terms, R squared is the correlation of determination. Um, R is the correlation coefficient. R squared is the coefficient of determination. That's all I've got for you today. Hope you got something out of it. Have a great day.